I love to receive gift cards. Love them. I love that flexibility, right? But as a giver, I had the same hesitation that a lot of people do. Like, I just spent a hundred bucks on this and I'm just going to hand you this little card. And on top of that, for years, like my whole life leading up to that, we scratched the price tag off of the gifts we give people so they wouldn't know how much we spend. So here I am, you know, telling you exactly what it is. And so I thought I'm going to create this website where I just show people how to give gift cards without the guilt, really. That's what it came down to. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, this is Max Pittman from Right For Me, and you're listening to another episode of the Business Ninjas podcast. We meet the experts who are making things happen and scaling their businesses. And today we're talking about Shelly Hunter from giftcards.com. And Shelly is the director of e-commerce. Shelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to have you. And uh, you know, excited to dive into giftcards.com. Company's been around since 1999, and you've been in this space since 2009. So excited to understand a little bit more about what's going on there and some of the challenges you guys are facing. But before we jump into that, our Business Ninjas community is, is built of entrepreneurs, um, executives, and a lot of sales and marketing leaders. Um, so as the director of e-commerce at giftcards.com, you know, tell the Business Ninjas community a little bit about yourself, um, your role, um, and some of the things that you're focused on as well. Sure. No, I'm happy to. So primarily, I focus on all the content at giftcards.com. Back in 2009, even before that, gift cards were just becoming a thing. And I had this idea that, you know, blogs were actually pretty new at the time as well. And I felt like I love to receive gift cards. Love them. I love that flexibility, right? But as a giver, I had the same hesitation that a lot of people do. Like, I just spent a hundred bucks on this and I'm just going to hand you this little card. And on top of that, for years, like my whole life leading up to that, we scratched the price tag off of the gifts we give people so they wouldn't know how much we spend. So here I am, you know, telling you exactly what it is. And so I had this idea or, or actually the way I liked to give gift cards at the time was to just package them up with a little something extra. And it's not all that novel now, but at the time it was, you know, uh, a movie gift card with movie snacks or a restaurant gift card with, you know, just a dessert, a homemade dessert or something. And so I thought I'm going to create this website where I just show people how to give gift cards without the guilt, really. That's what it came down to. Yeah. And so I started doing that. But what I found is that People did enjoy that content, but the questions I was getting more often were things like, how much money should I put on a gift card? Can I give a kid a gift card? What do I do if I get a gift card I don't want? And so I started elaborating on that. And mind you, my expertise is fully just built out of my own experience. I'm just a consumer, right? And I'm I'm a mom. At that time, I had three little kids. And so what do I do? That's what I started blogging about. Now, giftcards.com they were starting to grow their business as well. And so giftcards.com is a one-stop shop for just hundreds and hundreds of gift cards. And so they knew that to compete in the SEO space, they needed content. And they actually set out looking for just a content writer that they could hire and get that person to be the face of the gift cards or just write a whole bunch of content. And that's when they found me. I'm going to say I probably had 13 Twitter followers. Like I was, I'd been doing it for about three years at that time, but it was slow and social media was barely a thing. And so anyway, they came to me and they said, you want to join forces? And it just made sense. I, I, they needed a content writer and I needed to make more money. <laughs> so <laughs> together we really combined forces. They acquired my blog and we rolled a lot of my content onto their site. And from there, I started like really ramping up the amount of content I produce as well. And so it really was a great combination of what we both needed. And we were able to really just come out of the gate. And to this day, you know, there's more people in the space now, but I would say we're still the top ranking content creator in gift cards. And certainly my blog posts outrank a ton of other content in that space. So 
that's what I'm doing now. And I am still doing it um, for giftcards.com. So very cool. Yeah. It's such a unique and interesting kind of origin story behind, you know, your own blog, uh, which is, by the way, I want to plug for you, gift card girlfriends. Um, <laughs> uh, it's yeah, and and to kind of be almost like at the forefront of that space to to where you are now. It's it's been quite a journey from yeah. from that to to where you are today. Yeah. So what are what are some of the you know uh, audiences that that you're focused in on? Like, what is is it the you know. Um, you know, specific demographics, uh, specific regions, you know, who do you want to be talking to or writing, writing to? Right. So I really position myself at the crossroads of every gift card question a person has. I personally am not specifically writing to a, you know, a, what's it called? An, an avatar. The company as a whole has that, but the strength of my brand is answering questions. And so those are coming in from all over the place. And so My focus and the reason it's called gift card girlfriend is because I try to give people the information they need like a friend would. So I'm not going to try and, you know, write at this high level business. Um, I just want to tell you how I actually use my gift cards and how they can as well. So I am looking at questions that people are asking and then I write the best possible answer I can for that. And let me give you an example. When I first merged with giftcards.com, um, the CEO of the company, you know, he'd been in this in that space and other e-commerce spaces for a while. And so he wanted me to like produce tons and tons of blog posts with a Q&A mindset. And he was right and he was wrong. So he was right on the Q&A, but he wanted me to write him almost like Yahoo answers, like give me this right short, short, short. And I couldn't every time I would go to write that answer, I would feel like. I have to explain this better. I have to, you know, and I'm not not dumb it down. I want to be comprehensive. So maybe I can answer your question in the top of that blog post, but I want to give you all the questions, the answers that I actually think you're asking. And so it really turned into a blend of his idea. He was correct. Give me Q&A. But my desire to really fully answer that question. And so from an SEO perspective, we were getting the questions right. And then the length of the content was helping us really answer the question, which Google recognizes. So yeah. if you're creating a blog of any type or any kind of content, if you write like really short and people come into your site and they bounce back out, it doesn't help you as much as if they come in and really, you know, spend some time there. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like you were really trying to become almost like um a domain authority in this space uh, without even realizing it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, really just, and you know, it's funny because thinking back to that time as well, I didn't really understand SEO when they hired me and there were people there that did. And so they gave me all these rules and it needs to be this. And and so the first, you know, maybe even year, the blog posts I was writing, I was like, okay, I got to have this, 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 this. And I finally realized, you know what? I'll let it go. I'm going to answer this question the best way I can. And then when I'm done with the blog post, I'll go back and apply the SEO tricks to it. But the authenticity is what really helps because it it truly is a desire to answer that question. And then we can get technical with it if we want. But when I was doing the reverse, it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that's a little bit of your secret sauce is, is really just being authentic um in in caring about this space itself like would you agree or you know do you have any other you know thoughts around maybe like what sets you apart from uh from others in this space yeah i have to give givecards.com credit for allowing me the freedom to truly answer a question right because sometimes uh, often the questions i'm getting are not about our products um and they have allowed me to answer correctly whatever the question is and so Even if that means, for example, you know, Visa gift cards or MasterCard gift cards, those are fees that you're going to get fees with those. You're going to get non-use fees and things like that versus a store gift card. And they allow me rather than having to put this marketing spin on it of like, oh, it's fine. You know, (laughs) I really am thankful that they've given me the, the freedom to be authentic in my answers and that that is what allows the consumers to trust me. And, and I'll tell you, like 
some of the questions that are that sell a lot of gift cards are things like, what do I do with a gift card I don't want? Or um, how do I sell my gift card? So the person is coming to the site without a sales in mind and they end up buying from us. And so I think that that authenticity helps them to feel like, you know, we're, we're a legitimate business and it's not, you know, not everybody's happy with what we do and people that get declined when they're making purchases are really unhappy, but in general, it is building the authenticity is what builds trust in the company. And then they do become customers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, trust, you know, is, is definitely going to be a big thing, right. For keeping customers to come back, trusting you is a valued resource. And obviously Google wants to recognize that as well. So what are some of like the challenges that, you know, that you're seeing right now from, you know, a content perspective? Like what, what are some of the things that you're you're facing right now from an individual perspective? And then maybe, you know, think about giftcards.com as, as a business. What are some of the challenges you guys are solving? I'll give you one of each. From a okay. personal perspective, I've been doing this since 2009, right? And it's not that I'm worn out of the topic, but a blog post that I wrote maybe 10 years ago it needs to be updated. And maybe I updated it five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. Sometimes I get tired of updating the same blog post. Mm -hmm. And I can live with updating the content if the content changes. But when you have a lot of people in a company and they care about their brand as they should, um, you know, a lot of that content, it comes with images as well. And so I might have images of your Olive Garden gift card from five years ago and the Sephora gift card from three years ago. And they want me to update every image every time a brand changes. And that is a little draining for me. That's hard for me. Mm -hmm. So um, I make it work, but that is a personal challenge. Now let's talk about a corporate challenge. We're a worldwide company now. Um, Giftcards.com is owned by Blackhawk Network. And I'm, I don't know if I can... I'm sure we're the largest gift card supplier in the world, but maybe there's another one. I don't know. So don't quote me on that piece of it. But giftcards.com went through a big rebranding effort last year, the year before, and made it kind of the best in class. And there's a lot that's still being worked on. But but the idea is to then replicate that in other countries. And I don't live in other countries. And that's a lot of content to create. And the secret sauce of how it's worked at giftcards.com in the United States has to be replicated in other countries. And so from a content perspective, we have to get people who understand the gift card rules. So even if I'm willing to write for Canada, I don't know what the gift card laws are in Canada. I don't know what the gift card, the top gift card brands are in Canada. And I'm not saying I can't get that, but you know, as a company grows and you want to have more a more global presence, you want to have make sure that the voice you have in each of those locations speaks to what the the seeker, the person typing in the question, is asking. Sure. So it sounds like kind of two, scalability uh, in two different specific aspects. One of which, you know, trying to scale and optimize other blogs that you've written before that need to be updated sometimes isn't necessarily scalable because it is very granular at times. And then scaling into other or other, sorry, other countries um, to ensure like you're getting the messaging correct in those places also seems to be one of the bigger challenges for you. Yeah. And and again, I think it's because I I created this problem in a sense that I care about actually answering the question. So mm -hmm you know, to remove some of those issues would be to kind of write from more of a marketing perspective, you know, this is what we're selling and hope you like it, you know. Um, but I want to be able to answer the question in the location that those people are. I want to answer it accurately. And also, I want to, you know, the authenticity is what is why I took the pictures to begin with. So there's things that we will have to scale for sure. You created your own problem because you care too much. And I know. <laughs> I was too much of a girlfriend. <laughs> but there's, but there's, there has to be care behind it, right? We we talked about that. Like, the, it has to show through. Um, and you really have to care about this in order to to do this for over a decade, right? Yeah, I I, I believe that wholeheartedly. A lot of people have come to me and they have blog ideas and things they want to do, and I'm happy to talk to them and listen to them. 
but you have to care what you're writing. That's the only way I've been able to do it for this long. Um, back in the day before giftcards.com hired me to come help, they knew they needed content and they were right about that, but they kind of made it this assignment that everybody in the company had to write a blog just to get content, right? Mm -hmm. And there were probably only a handful of people that actually could write and others were great at their tech and they understood gift cards, but they, they didn't care about how you present a gift card or, or stuff like that. And so what you had was a, a lot of content that didn't serve the company. It wasn't well-written and people weren't searching for it. So putting it out there, I guess, I, I, I guess it, a way to say that another way is it's more important to have 10 really great blog posts that answer a question than 100 that have nothing to do, aren't in your, you know, aren't addressing what your customer needs and are just all over the place. So it's better to be intentional and get well-written uh, content that you care about and is what customers want. 100%. Yeah. And it also has to be structured in a way that, that Google likes, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, I, I totally agree. It's, uh, you know, a lot of companies are when they're first getting started out, right? They want people to, you know, begin with a higher frequency or, or higher content route and push out a ton of stuff to start popping up on Google's radar and assume that Google will index them and, you know, hopefully speed that up to get ranked. But yeah. since it's not potentially great content, um, the traffic doesn't perform potentially, the quality of traffic starts to dip, leads to higher bounce rates. Um, and Google will obviously measure that stuff as, as part of its algorithm when it ranks sites. So it makes sense why your strategy and why things might pivot to a more high quality content coming out of the gate from day one um, as it as it kind of trusts and can rank over time. Um, because yeah, the idea is to build authority on the brand. What what would you say are some of like other best practices? You know that that you've instituted in addition obviously caring about what you're writing high quality you know what are some of the other things you've noticed in the in the content marketing world yeah i think it's important to stay in your lane there's other things i care about i play tennis i like popcorn i like there's other things i care about but if i write a blog post about playing tennis it doesn't belong on giftcards.com it's nobody's unless i'm writing about the best gift cards for tennis players now i can do that and and it will be a long tail search for somebody. But even at that, it's not a high, you know, I would have to look and see how many people are looking for that combination. So I think it's super important to stay in your lane. And that is, I see that all the time with people starting their blogs, um, is that they they go a little they go too far. Um, a second thing is we are giftcards.com. So connecting your content with your URL, I think is important. And if you can't connect it, you know, it doesn't mean you can't do it, but to the best of your abilities, I would be trying to make sure that that, that, that is aligned. Um, and again, I think just looking at your content from the, the perspective of what is the purpose of it. So oftentimes in marketing, that's, I work in marketing. And so people will want me to write a blog post about this new product that's launching. And I will, but I have to explain to them every time, I will write this for you, but please understand it's not going to sell the product that you're looking for because nobody's looking for it. So, but it's okay if you want me to write this so that you can share it on social media, Pinterest, Twitter. If you want me to do it for that purpose, I will do that. But just understand it's not going to rank suddenly because, you know, you want to tell people about it. The strength of my blog, I have to say over and over again, is because I meet people at the crossroads of the questions they're asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not suddenly going to rank um, if there's no search volume for it, right? Right. And those, let's take a Sephora, for example. If I write about a Sephora gift card, I'm still not going to outrank Sephora on that, right? I, I'll outrank on gift card, but I'm not going to outrank Sephora and I'm not going to outrank Cheesecake Factory and I'm not going to outrank, um, you know, Dick's Sporting Goods if they're doing their stuff as well. And that's OK. I It's OK for me to take that second piece. Right. But but as long as you keep that authenticity of what you're trying to do, it's OK to have all that long tail search. Just make sure you understand the purpose of the yeah. content you're creating. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to think almost in generic terms, industry terms, terms that relate to questions that 
prospective customers might have, right? You're not going to outrank a Sephora, like it's the branded keyword term, right? right. Like people are just typing that in, obviously it's taken in there. So yeah, we, we you know, the folks that, that we want to talk to are the ones that we want to throw traffic that way, but also trying to maximize on the, the, on those, on those terms, right? Because you want you ranking for them over the long run. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it makes, makes sense why that's, that's definitely going to be your focus. Is there something that like you're working on? You know, I know we talked a little bit about like, you know, opening up and expanding new geos, um, scaling your own, scaling what you've done in the before in the past, uh, and and trying to optimize that here for, for where we are in 2023. Like, what is something that you're hoping to like celebrate potentially like a year from now? Well, you know, given the fact that I have created all this content, like this foundation, right? And the beautiful thing is, it's really given me a voice in the industry and with the media. So. I'm going to answer your question in a second, but by pointing out that becoming a subject matter expert, a consumer guide means I get a lot of opportunities to speak in the media on behalf of the company. Now, that is not for the purpose of me being on TV. I do that so that I can get inbound links from really reputable sources. So you have to do it both ways. I can't just reach out to the media and say, hey, I'd like to do a story on gift cards. They want to know, well, who are you? Yeah. Show me your blog posts. Show me the content that you've created so we know what you're going to talk about. So if we are pitching to the media, I'm going to show them a piece of content that lines up with the talking points that I want to share. So that's number one. And then the second thing is it gave me that platform to say, well, if I'm going to talk to the media or really um, leverage this foundation that I've created, I want to do some things that matter even more. And we have some some pitfalls in the gift card industry. There's a lot of scams that are people are being targeted where they're being requested to buy gift cards for things that don't exist. Um, there's, you know, if a store goes out of business, there is a problem with that gift card. And so I want to be able to make a bigger dent in those problems by leveraging this foundation that I created. Um, so that's something that I care deeply about. That's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, something that is probably not, you know, top of mind for people when they are thinking about, you know, oh, I have this gift card. What, what do I do with it? Or what should I be finding um, that would be would be relevant to, to me, like searching for a gift card for someone else. Right. But um, to hear you say, like, you know, the, the big challenge, there are other challenges that are not necessarily top of mind for you, but maybe someone did get scammed. And there are issues that um, people are facing um, or, hey, I need a place to sell this, right? There, there's so many different things that, um, like think of me as a consumer, I, I used a gift card yesterday, uh, yeah. to Dick's Sporting Goods and, and got something, right? And it was easy, seamless transaction. But what if, you know, I had a, you know, uh, I didn't have a Dick's Sporting Goods near me or I had trouble using the computer or something like that, like how would I even leverage this? So it sounds like you know, a lot of things that you're focusing on are kind of from like a macro level, uh, to, to this industry, which is why you're a consumer guide and wants to get out there and, and talk to media to, to get more opportunities. Yeah, thank you. And I appreciate it. I have to give giftcards.com credit for allowing me to do that because they could have said, no, if it's not a sales post, you're not doing it. And I, I wouldn't have lasted this long if that's what, what had been the case. But I do credit them for allowing me to truly help the consumer. Love it. Well, as we wrap things up, Shelly, um, is there anything else that you know, you'd like to share anything we haven't covered that you think listeners would would need to know either about you or, you know, about the gift card industry in general? Yeah, you know, I guess I would say that as a company is deciding that they're going to create a blog and and we do need content. We need good content, actually. Um, people come to me a lot. I get, oh, daily an email of somebody that wants me to write about them, or more importantly, give them a link, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's the link trading things. And what they'll say is, I want to write for your blog. Can I write for your blog, right? And so they do that so that that then on my blog that is high ranking, it's going to link back to their blog, which is less high ranking. Mm -hmm. And I rarely respond to these because I they haven't gone well. I've tried them a couple times. They don't go well. And I feel like, why aren't you asking me the reverse? Why don't you ask me to write for your blog? 
And then I will link to the content that I created. So I feel like there's, you know, that's like an old approach to doing this that I don't think works all that great. And secondly, they will sometimes say, we think our content is a great fit for you. And then when I look at their website, it's haircutting or, you know, something for, I, I can't even say, like fishing. And it's not, we want to write about the top 10 gift cards you can get for a fisherman that I'm interested in. But instead, it is totally irrelevant. And I think you didn't even look. (laughs) And I'm not going to give up this valuable real estate. I'm happy to actually create something together if it works for both of us. But I feel like people are asking, they're just asking for links from my site to theirs. And we spent a lot of time intentionally writing what we've created. And so that doesn't really work for me. But I'm sure that there are opportunities to work together if we were like truly collaborating. So happy to collaborate, but also learn from the masters. Let's <laughs> <laughs> learn from us. Let's take a master class uh, and, and let us, you know, let us partner up together. Don't, it's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street here and, and you're happy to help. Yep, absolutely. So where can people find you? Uh, I know you're, you're you're very active in the media and, uh, and on social. So where can people find you? Probably the best thing to do at LinkedIn. Look for me at Shelly Hunter. You can look for giftcards.com or gift card girlfriend. Um, I am on other social media platforms, but those kind of ebb and flow. And a lot of those are manned by the company as a whole. So LinkedIn is a great way if you want to connect with me on this, the topic of content. Perfect. We'll definitely include that in the links uh, in the description as well for people to find you and hopefully collaborate with you as well in the future. And uh, I appreciate you being here, part of the Business Ninja podcast. It sounds like we both have a lot of synergy in how we think about content how we think about growing people's businesses and getting awareness out there uh, and uh, and ideally conversion, right? More opportunities, more sales, uh, more opportunities to talk to prospective clients and create those partnerships. So I feel like I've definitely learned a lot about you and what you have going on. And I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to do this and for putting better content out in the world. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Shelly. That wraps up uh, another episode of the Business Ninjas podcast, everybody. Thank you so much for listening and uh, have a great rest of the day. 